Hi, some few days ago, AMD officially announced that they will purchase Xilinx. The two companies will merge. AMD is something near $100 billion. There are 12,000 employees. The CEO is Dr. Lisa Su. And Xilinx is near 5,000 employees. Dr. Peng is the CEO. And the valuation is total $35 billion. This is the weekly chart for the AMD. If you look around 2016, AMD is bankrupt. Nobody is buying AMD products. Now, Dr. Lisa Su comes as the CEO of the company, and then AMD starts growing. People pay more attention to AMD, buy more products, and investors start pouring their money into AMD shares. The AMD shares grow and grow until near recently that it has a huge growth. And I think this is the point that the AMD guys see that, oh, we have a lot of money from investors in our hand and let's do something cool with this money. Obviously, a cool decision can be to buy a good company. They decide to buy Xilinx. On the other side of the story, if we look at the Xilinx shares, we can see that around 2019, everybody loves Xilinx. Xilinx shares are growing very rapidly to a very high valuation. I remember this time in the market everybody was saying buy Xilinx because everybody was thinking the chips they are creating they are really awesome and they won't have any competitor. I think what happens next is Nvidia started rising basically and other companies. Xilinx shares started falling but not that much. This is the drop from COVID-19 and then Xilinx started growing again and at this point this is where it's announced that amd is going to purchase xilinx for the first time so the, the rule for converting xilinx shares to amd shares is the investors for each share of xilinx they will receive 1.7 shares of amd obviously the, sh the stock price for xilinx jumped up in my idea and in the idea of many other people what amd has done is an extremely clever decision. Why? Because Xilinx has some set of technologies, some knowledge base that AMD doesn't have at all. And now that Xilinx is a part of AMD, AMD also has access to that knowledge base. AMD had, for example, no idea about creating a programmable fabric. It's not an easy task. Xilinx has really worked on the development flow, on the software. So now AMD has access to all of these and that's really great for AMD. Now there are some sectors in the industry that AMD have, basically they were not present in these sectors and Xilinx was playing a role in these sectors and now AMD has also access to these sectors. So overall they can make more profit. If we look at the latest uh, revenue announcement from Xilinx, the latest revenue announcement is around 767 million dollar for the quarter and if we look how this revenue is divided between different sectors 44 percent of the revenue is coming from industry like for example i'm using fpga for a motor drive then 16 percent is coming from automotive and consumer electronics 26 percent is coming from basically communications and 14% is coming from data centers. Now, if you look at these four categories, you can see AMD has already been present in the industry. Maybe AMD is not as present as Xilinx, but I'm aware of many systems, many embedded systems, which are using AMD CPUs on the motherboard. Also for data centers, for high performance computing, as we know, AMD has been playing a significant role. But if you look at the automotive products, for example, the ECU used in the car, based on my knowledge, my experience, I, I did never see any product from AMD being directly used, for example, in an ECU. I have seen ECUs with Intel products, but I have never seen any ECU with a CPU from AMD. And now, now that they have purchased Xilinx, they are able to enter this sector. There are a lot of opportunities now for AMD to sell its product more in the automotive sector. And even if they don't decide to do that, Xilinx is already playing a very good role in automotive sector. I have personally done many projects in automotive sector that I have used Xilinx FPGAs. For example, data logging, we did it with Vertex 7. 
or for example, surround view with, with Zinc Ultra scale. Also for telecommunications, for communication, Xilinx has been playing a very important role. Many of the um, um, mobile stations, they are using Xilinx products or many of high performance switches, they are using Xilinx products. So overall, the decision has been really, really clever. For example, in automotive sector, Xilinx and Continental collaborated to create for the imaging radar. Another example is autonomous driving system, which Baidu is developing. Another example is a vision system that Subaru is developing. Here is another set of examples, the Kintex, which is a space grade, or Xilinx and Samsung are working together for the 5G network. And this is also a great market. Now Xilinx is developing a really cool family of programmable uh, devices called RFSOC. I have, I have used RFSOC in one project and it's really am, an amazing device. The A2Ds, which you have there for, with, with a sampling rate of four giga sample per second, they really work fine. They, both the DAX and the A2Ds, they really work. And this is a really cool product. And now that AMD has purchased Xilinx, they have access to all of the knowledge base related to design of such a multiprocessor system on chip. Five years ago, Intel purchased Altera and it created a lot of excitement. I personally was thinking this is game over for Xilinx. But after that, nothing significant happened. If you look at the current portfolio of FPGAs from Intel and development tools, it has made progress in comparison to five years ago. But the progress is not really significant. And in my idea, even if Intel was not purchasing Altera, Altera products were better now. They were better, they were cheaper. This is my idea and I probably create another video on this. Now, maybe this time is different. Maybe this time that AMD has purchased Xilinx, they create cool products by combining the IP from both companies. Maybe they create an MPSOC which contains CPU cores or GPU from AMD. This, this is gonna be really cool. For example, if you look at the Zinc Ultra Scale Plus, a, a big problem it has is the GPU. The GPU is really weak for performing 3D operations. Or what about a um, server CPU, which contains a programmable fabric beside it in the same package, directly connected. These are really interesting ideas. And we can talk about them in other videos. But maybe this time is different. Maybe AMD acts better in comparison to Intel. Intel obviously had some issues with their fabrication technology node. Maybe this time we will see more interesting products.